One of the first steps in setting up your Epson EcoTank printer for sublimation is installing the printer software. In my video showing how to convert an Epson EcoTank ET2400, I skimmed over how I installed the software on my PC. This video will walk you through the steps in detail and answer some of the questions I received about the software setup. My name is Ruth, this is Hanks, Maker Mentor, where I help you learn how to make. I used the quick start guide to set up my printer. While the print heads were charging, I moved on to step five to install the software. At the top, it notes a few important things. You need an internet connection to obtain the software. And if you are using a Chromebook, you need to go to the listed website, which is different than if you're using a PC or a Mac. If you have already connected your printer via USB to your computer, unplug it before moving forward. Then you go to the printer specific page to download the software. It's listed on the quick start page, but you can also type in the name of your printer with the word software into your preferred search engine. I'm using Chrome. I typed in epson.com slash support slash ET2400. The page has tabs to help you find what you're looking for. We are going to stay here on downloads. The system tries to automatically detect if you're using a Windows operating system or Mac, as well as which version. If it can't, you need to open the dropdown and select the correct one for your computer. This will make sure it only shows you files that are compatible. You'll scroll down to see the drivers and utilities that are recommended for you grouped together in a single download, or you can open the drivers menu and the utilities menu and select only what you need. I used the recommended file. My downloaded files show up at the bottom of the browser window. If yours don't, I would suggest looking in your downloads folder. I clicked on the file to run the program. I'm using dual monitors and my pop-ups normally show up on the other monitor first and then I move them over. The first pop-up says it contains the installer to obtain everything you need to use the Epson EcoTank ET2400. I clicked OK. The next pop-up installs some of the software. Then you have the license agreement. It is long, but you should consider if you want to read the entire agreement or just agree without reading it. You click Accept or Exit the Setup. After you click Accept, it asks you to agree to the collection of information about your software usage. It is preset to Allow, but I unclicked the box and selected Next because I prefer not to give them that data. Then asks you to check if the printer is turned on and if you finished filling the ink tanks. You need to click the box that says you filled the ink tanks, then click next. It downloads and installs the needed software. It automatically moves on to the select your connection screen. You can either use wireless, which is what it automatically tries to do, or you can use a USB cable. The USB cable is not provided since most people already have them at home. You can set it up for wireless and USB. You just have to run the install software twice. I set mine up via wireless the first time. I'm gonna show you that, but I'll also make sure I cover the things that are different if you're setting it up via USB. If it starts doing wireless, but you want to use USB, you might need to select close, then select the connect via USB cable option. It asked if I wanted to connect to the network automatically. I said yes. If it can't connect automatically, you will need to enter your network name and password. It checked the system again, then downloaded the network utilities before setting up the network connection. You can choose to have the IP address configure automatically or have a static IP address. I left it with automatic and clicked next. It checks the system again, and then you select which software to install. It must install the printer driver and the scanner driver. I unselected most of them, but you might want some of them or all of them. You can click on them to see what they include. When you're ready, click next, then it downloads and installs the optional software. Then it checks the ink initialization status. You can skip it, but I'm not going to chance it. Now you're ready to print the test page. After it prints, click Next. Don't turn off the printer yet because it needs to check the firmware. 
Mine needed a firmware update. Yours probably will too. You need to keep the computer and printer on and connected during the entire firmware update to prevent malfunctions. When you're ready, click Next. This is one area where wireless differs from USB. With USB, you need to turn the printer off and then back on before it can update the firmware or you'll get an error message. After the firmware is done updating, it shows the warranty details and has defaulted to reminding you about the extended service plan before your warranty expires. Since I've already voided the warranty by using Sublimation Inc., I unclick that and click Next. The software is now installed. It asks you to register your product to get updated product information, easy driver updates, and warranty support and advice. Even though the warranty information is not applicable to me, I chose to register. If you don't want to register, I think you can click finish and register, then close the browser window that opens with the registration. Now we'll take a moment to walk through how to register the printer. I'm going to blur out any sensitive information. I registered mine as a business user, which requires more information than a home user. After you input your information, you can choose if you want promotional emails from Epson. Click next. It will minimize the information you already input and give you a place to input the product information. The serial number was already in there, but you can find it on your printer. I bought my printer from Target. You type in the zip code of where you installed the printer. If you are registering more than one device, you can click add a product or you can click submit. They send a confirmation to the email address you registered with. You can choose to create an Epson account or just go and get started with your printer. I hope this video was helpful to see how to install and register your Epson EcoTank printer. While I don't know everything about printers, I do the best I can to answer questions that you leave in the comments. If you want to see more sublimation videos, click on this playlist right here. Thanks for watching Hanks, Maker Mentor, and until next time, bye.